Um, so I am, well, firstly, hello. Um, as I was saying, I'm Louise. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to talk at this brilliant event today. Um, I'm here really to talk a bit about um, what I do. So I am policy officer at Surface Against Sewage um, and I sit within our campaigns and policy team. And I'm here a bit to talk about um, kind of the other side of, of landscapes um, and that's um, the UK's waterways being rivers and oceans, the problems they face and particularly um, being surface against sewage, how grassroots activism is putting them top of the, the agenda in the public, um, across the media and um, in political spheres as well. And also the importance of, of waterways and why, why the work that we're doing is, is being effective. So firstly, I just thought I'd cover a little bit about um, what's going on with the UK waterways and um, what's what's the problem and why you're probably spotting little bits in and around the news of the state of our waterways, particularly um, with uh, sewage. So according to um, the Environment Agency, um, who are the regulators of, of our waterways in the UK, uh, across England at least, 14% um, of rivers meet good ecological status and none of, of our rivers meet um, good chemical status. And part of that that's contributing towards that is 35% of waterways that are classified as poor, um, so as part of those um, that are meeting not meeting good status, um, are, are impacted by sewage. So sewage is having a really big impact on waterways across the country. It's the second most impacting um, source of pollution um, below agricultural pollution, um, which we were hearing a little bit from Glenn about, about from Glenn earlier and, and as well as Rebecca. So what does that impact um like what why why are we seeing these problems well um what's happening on the ground really is water companies are discharging um huge volumes of sewage into UK waterways um in 2022 they discharged over 300,000 um times into waterways across the UK and that was actually a massive reduction from the year before because of um droughts um but in total, that, that averages out to over 800 times a day, water companies are discharging untreated raw sewage into waterways. Um, and that's despite current legislation, which is requiring water companies to, to clean up um, and treat water um, effectively from sewage, sewage um, to make sure that they don't um, overflow other than in exceptional circumstances. And that's exceptional circumstances seen as in periods of exceptionally heavy rainfall. Now, 300,000 times discharges and periods of ex exceptional heavy rainfall kind of doesn't quite match up. So how have we got into this position? Well, Water companies have, have kind of been allowed, uh, are responsible for our waterways across the UK in, in terms of the sewage that they're polluting and they have to clean up and deal with in terms of what they're reaching them. But unfortunately, they're not dealing with it very well. Um, so we know that water companies have, have been profiting um, out of the pollution they're getting to put into our waterways, particularly because... Um, um, regulators aren't being able to hold them to account. And so whilst they don't hold them to account, um, water companies are allowed to kind of, instead of investing in, in the system that they're supposed to be looking after, protecting, conserving, they're actually um, polluting and pouring, pouring sewage into waterways. And this is all happening whilst, um, whilst um, regulators aren't um, able to, to, actually support the system and they're really poorly um, looking after it, it means that they aren't encouraging a, a greater investment from water companies into waterways. And because of as well the silent regulators we're seeing, government have kind of been um, able to neglect, not necessarily look at or deal with the problem for, for quite a long time. And so whilst we're facing this really big problem, I kind of want to talk a bit today about the positive story that we're that we're able to make sure that we're bringing together as as a community, as people across the UK, and as particularly as water users and and people who go into the environment, particularly um, in terms of surface against sewage. Um, su surfers across the UK, um, we were started over thirty years ago, have been noticing the sewage that's been polluting our waterways for a long time, and because of that, 
we feel compelled to act, right? We care about our oceans, we care about our rivers, we're seeing these places be polluted and it's really forcing um, change from, from, the, from the top, the bottom up. Um, and here at Surfers Against Sewage, that's kind of how we all started. So it was a group of surfers who were getting sick of, of swimming in and surfing in sewage really. And being so close to the effective problem mean we're taking a stand. So what are we doing? Well. We're trying to harness this power of the grassroots activism and the grassroots um, care from people across the UK, particularly surfers. But we're, we these days we say we're more than surfers and we're more than sewage and we're focusing on kind of the problem facing our oceans as a whole. Um, and we're trying to bring together people to tackle the problems that we face. Firstly, we're doing that um, by we see it as our imperative to create ocean activists everywhere for a thriving ocean and thriving people. And that's kind of our mission. And that's what we see real power in. We want to, to bring people together to demand change at the highest level. Um, and working from the beach front fronts to the front benches. So, so across people across the UK who just like accessing their waterways or like going for a stroll on the beach uh, can demand change at the highest level. And to do that, we mobilise people across the country um, and getting them to call out the problems they face on a daily basis, that 800 times a day um, sewage being discharged into UK waterways. If we get people to, to call it out every time it happens, then we're, we're on a really big, good step forward in, in facing the problem. So firstly, what we're doing to do that? Well, our, we initially see, see the way to solve it is revealing the problem. People don't in always know about what's going on in our waterways. So we see data as a really big driver of, of change in, in this problem. And that's kind of what we've seen growing momentum over the past um, couple of years, particularly to, to get the public um, and the media to understand what's going on with our waterways and, and, and how it's being mistreated and how um, we can um, force water companies to, to make a change. So we've been we've been asking for more data and we've been getting it. So that's how we've kind of been pushing on a yearly basis, understanding how much water companies are discharging sewage into waterways. But also it um, we know that we can go further and we're highlighting the, the things that we don't we don't know and we don't see. And that's part of what we're doing at Surface Against Sewage. So to reveal a bit more about what we're doing, we have um, we've developed an app um, called the Safer Seas and Rivers Service. It's an app which provides near real time data to, to water users on whether it's safe for them to enter their, their local waterways and whether it's being polluted by um, sewage, but also agricultural runoff. Um, and this empowers communities, firstly, to help them understand the risks they face when entering the waterways, but also to take action, right? We want them to be able to say, whenever they know of sewage entering their waterways, they can contact their local MP to let them know what's going on, tell them why they couldn't access their waterways that day or why they decided not to because it was um, polluted. And also as a, a way to, we're using it on a national scale to show the scale of the problem. So in the picture on the right, um, if you can see it, We've got an image that comes from our Safe Season River service on, on a day where there's been huge scale discharge across the UK, um, which is kind of highlighted in the picture in the middle. You can see what that looks like um, sometimes in waterways. Um, and that's why we're, we're doing this. We're also supporting communities to, to reveal what's going on in their local areas. So as you can see in the as you saw in the picture, um, um, I showed you just before, it's very coastal heavy and um, the data that we do receive at the moment. And that's because um, bathing waters are really coastal heavy at the moment. There's only three inland coastal areas designated as bathing waters across the UK. And so we're su supporting communities to ask for more for their local swim spots, spots that they they go to on a regular basis or once a week or whatever that makes them feel really good and they enjoy accessing. But potentially they see problems with the pollution that they're, that they're seeing. And so designating their local areas areas um, as a bathing water allows them to, to force the, um, the environment agency to measure the quality of water that's going on and also forces um, water companies to invest in infrastructure to, to stop potential pollution events that are going on around that area. And so it's kind of a, a, a dual technique, a bit of a stick and um, stick for, for water companies um, to make sure that they're, they're polluting and also allowing bathers to understand what they're accessing and see whether they're facing any problems in their local area whether they were getting sick and they didn't understand why, or whether they just seeing that they were having problems in their area in terms of pollution. Um, and so 
what we're doing as well is we're, we're calling on a national scale. So we're seeing this um, on a local problem. We're, we're getting communities to, to designate bathing waters, but we're also nationally calling for more bathing water designation and trying to make the process easier for communities on the ground. And so we're working in that two two step process from the bottom up and the top down. We're also, as well as data, we're also calling out what's going on. So we're doing um, many things um, over the next and have been over the past few years to really bring a momentum behind the data that we're seeing and bring a community together. Um, and particularly um, last year, we um, this is a photo from last year where we gathered um, lots of people together in a protest, but whether it's protests, petitions, writing to MPs, we're just getting communities to, to show their they're um, the people of power that they're really outraged by the problem, whether that's water companies or um, their local politicians and trying to get them to, to solve it. Um, and so I thought I'd show you a little bit of an example of a, of a more specific thing that we're, we're focusing on. So at the moment, we're really trying to call out water companies on the um, profiteering that they're doing from our water companies, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, and by doing that, we're both raising awareness um, with the public of what's going on in terms of, so last year water companies um, pulled out uh, 1.4 billion in, term, in profit um, and paid that out to their state um, state stakeholders, as well as 15.5, um, 16.5 uh, billion pounds worth of bonuses to their CEOs. So they're, they're extracting a large amount of money from this system. And we're really trying to make that money be reinvested into the infrastructure until at least until that um, they reach minimum standards and, and are actually facing and, and passing the legislation that they're required to pass. And whilst doing that, we've kind of seen a huge um, public and media appetite for the problem that we're talking about, particularly regarding the, the finances side of, of what water companies doing in terms of extracting, because I think it's it's a real symbol of what um, Alison um, Alison, sorry, Elise was talking about earlier in terms of we're really seeing um, lots of people in power being able to extract from from our our nature um, our nature, whether it be our waterways, our landscapes, um, and we're really seeing it as like a as a symbol of what's going on across across the world, really, in terms of um, extracting um, profit um, whilst polluting um, what we're doing. And so SAS have really been at the forefront of, of driving this conversation in the press, and we're really seeing um, a big movement in terms of from the public and the media. But we don't want to just um, kick up a stink all the time. We want to also make sure that we're providing solutions. And, and the more we've been, uh, whilst we are just surfers, just a community of people really calling out what's going on, we've been realising that over the time we we really get to understand the problems and, and realise that there are really good solutions out there and there's ways that we can call for change. Um, and as part of that, we've done in the past, um, particularly um, part of what's been going on and the reason we're seeing so much about water quality um, across the UK at the moment is... Um, with the Environment Act, which was um, an act to, um, brought about to protect um, our environment over whilst um, when we've kind of been changing regulation at the moment because of Brexit. Um, it allowed like um, us, which initially wasn't going to focus much around sewage, we really got ocean activists across the country to call for better for, from their local politicians and forced um, government to take action um, to tackle sewage pollution. And since then, we've kind of been riding a wave and, and trying to really build momentum on that. And whilst it's not the perfect start, it did um, force the government to put in um, a strategy for, for tackling sewage pollution. And it's something that we can now pile on the pressure and, and make sure that we can force water companies to act to stop the pollution they've been doing. And that's kind of where we see ourselves. We're, we're really trying to wide, ride this wave. Um, this Well, it's becoming a tidal wave, really, uh, towards the general election, getting people really involved in, in the sewage agenda and seeing when there's these moments where we can really take power and, and make change. And um, particularly in terms of um, the general election, we're looking at calling out ways that we can end sewage pollution. We're going to, to um, political parties and telling them we know how to solve this problem people across the UK care about it this is how you do it please um, take on our gold standard and and put um, show the people in power how we can finally put an end to this thing that people really care about and so I hope through this oh apologies 
Oh. Sorry, you carry on. I I missed I misjudged your ending. I thought that was no your... worries. I'll <laughs> I'll just I'm finishing up now. But I was just going to say, um, it's just really wanted to to show everyone that we really have the power and um, the people power we've been showing over the past few years to make change. And it's been this really strong driver from from communities across the UK who are really outraged by what's going on and, and want to make a difference. And that's what we've been really pushing for over the past um, 30 years. And we're really seeing it come to a head now. And I think it's a really good example of, of where we can have a positive change um, in our environment and make sure that we're making a change for, for the better for people and planet. Thank you very much.